Good morning everyone, how are you all doing? This is second week in lockdown, but today is quite an exciting day because I ordered some plants mail order and they should be arriving, yay! So I'll have something to do in the garden. Also a couple of bird boxes turned up that I'm gonna be looking forward to putting up. Who knew that putting up a bird box could be so thrilling? But given that I've done all the other jobs in the garden, I'm very excited about them turning up. Now, lots of people have been in touch asking about shade. Shade seems to be something that people struggle with, that throws them, they don't know what to plant there, that will do really well. So I've made some lists um, using the Bible, which is the encyclopedia of plants and flowers. Now, it can be a little bit daunting to look through it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my list and then kind of splice in some pictures of what I'm actually talking about in between. Because again, just like the last video, I can't get out to the garden centre to be doing this somewhere where I've got all the plants on display to be able to show you. So first things first, we've got dry shade. This is my list. I'm going to take a picture of this at the end. This list will be available for you all to see. Um, and the first thing on there is a juga. Now a juga is a really good ground smothering plant. It's a creeper. It's got quite a dark leaf and a lovely blue flower. That's my dog you can hear rattling around next door. Um, the next thing on the list is begonia. Now begonia has got big kind of almost, well, it's called elephant's ears, that's its common, uh, common name. And it's got these big glossy oval leaves and the beautiful pink flower. And again, that is a bit of a creeper. So over time, it will give you really good ground cover. And ground cover is brilliant because it suppresses weeds. Um, this champsia is a nice grass that will grow. We spoke on one of the other videos how grasses are really good at mixing planting schemes together. They're very forgiving. So if you're not good at placing plants and using grasses through spaces is always good. Epimedium, that's a woodland type plant. It's very delicate, it flowers now. I've got one in my garden and it's got pretty little leaves and then delicate little flowers that kind of just come up above those, look a little bit like fairies hats. It's quite a gentle plant, but it's very beautiful. Euonymus is a shrub. That is one that is variegated. You can get so with green and white leaves or you can get that it's just green leaves. There's quite a lot of varieties of that and it's dead easy, like really, really easy, no fuss plant. Then I've got several different types of geranium. I've got geranium nodstrum, which is a, quite a delicate geranium, which is brilliant for shade because if you plant anything with a white flower in shade, it automatically makes it feel a little bit lighter. Geranium phaeum, which I've got in my own garden, which is a dark flower and a really lovely foliage, like mottled foliage plant. I did talk about that in one of the earlier videos. And geranium macrorhizum, which is brilliant again at ground covering, smothering those weeds, and it will kind of just gently create a carpet over a few years. That's a, a good plant. Um, next one for ground cover is Pachysandra. That's an evergreen, so that has like a lovely shiny, low, shiny, glossy foliage with quite an insignificant flower, but really it's grown for the foliage and the fact that it creates this tapestry again. Vinca or periwinkle, lots of people know it as that. You can get Vinca Major and Vinca Minor. Now, the Major is a bit of a beast. It's a real thug and it will take over. So if you have the room for it, that's brilliant. But if you don't, then go with the Minor variety. Brunnera, um, something again I have in my own garden. You can get a couple of different varieties. One that's variegated, one that's not, but it has a little blue forget-me-not style flower. And then another shrub, Sambucus. This, I, I've put down Sambucus nigra here, which is the black foliaged one. And Sambucus is what you get elderflower from. So if you want to make elderflower cordial or anything like that, um, or elderflower champagne, oh, we're talking, um, then you can use the shrub Sambucus and harvest the flowers to do that. Next up, we've got damp shade. So the first thing on my list here is Fatsia japonica. So it's a bit like a fake castor oil plant. It's got these big glossy, quite tropical looking um, leaves. I spoke about that in one of the earlier videos. Sarcococca, which is, sounds rude, but it's not. Um, it's a lovely evergreen shrub and it flowers in the depths of winter. So December, January, it flowers and the flowers are really tiny and they're kind of like little dangling stars, if you like, under the foliage, but they smell incredible, like really, really beautiful. So if you put it by a door in the winter time, when you come home from work, you get that lovely little kind of uplift of nice scents, so good shrub. Next one, Digitalis or Foxglove, as everybody knows them. They all grow in shade very nicely and they give you nice height in shade, which is something that people will struggle with because really things that do well in shade tend to be low growing. Digitalis, the Foxglove is nice because they have that height. Uh, hellebores, always for me, just beautiful plants. Hostas, again, we spoke about those, just make sure you protect them from slugs. 
uh, Leucogen, which is the giant looking snowflake that I mentioned last week. Thalictrum, which is really, again, very pr pretty plant. All oh, plants are really. Um, but this has got nice kind of ferny looking foliage and then it has often white or like a, like a quite a glowing pinky purple colour, really delicate kind of flower that floats above on nice tall stems of other foliage. Aruncus, if you know what an astilbe looks like, Aruncus is like it's buckchunkle if you want. Um, it's nice, I have it in my garden, it looks fantastic with a sanguisorba. Um, Brunnera again, as that will cope with damp shade or dry shade. And then last on here is a grass called Lazula, which is really good. That looks fantastic planted with um, the geranium, geraniums and that in shade with ferns is a little kind of trio that looks wonderful together. So that is damp shade. There are also ferns that will grow in both types of shade. Just make sure if you're buying ferns, you read the label. Does it prefer dry shade or damp shade? But ferns are always a go-to if you have a shady spot. Then last, I've got climbers for shade. Um, on here, I have Chinomalese, which is flowering quince. If you like kind of cherry blossom, then you will love this. You can train it up against a wall or it will grow kind of freestanding as a shrub. Um, but up against the wall it looks stunning and it flowers right now at this time of year and you can get some which are really deep red or through to kind of apricotty colours and pale pinks. It's really lovely, very pretty thing. Uh, Cotone Aster, which is dead easy. You can get the Horizontalis, which is one that kind of grows like a fish bone, if you like, really flat against surfaces um, and other varieties that will weep. Um, they're brilliant for wildlife. If you want to attract wildlife into, into your garden, then Cotoneaster is a must because they bees love all the flowers and then they've got berries later in the year for birds, which is great. Pyrocantha is also something else that berries, but be warned, it has huge thorns in it, like really, really spiky thorns. So if you have a window that you want to kind of put some security around for if it's a low window, a bedroom window downstairs or anything like that, for security, you can always plant Pyrocantha under a window because then if anybody try, should try to break in they'll really know about it because it's got beastly thorns on it. Um, Clematis Montana is a Clematis that will grow really well in shade and Clematis Armandii is an evergreen Clematis which has lovely big long land shaped leaves and white flowers and the white flowers smell really good. I apologise if you can hear my dog scratching around in there, he's desperate to get out. Um, Hydrangea petiolaris is a climbing hydrangea, so it's deciduous, all its leaves will fall off. And it has lovely lace cap flowers, it's very, very pretty, and it self clings as well, which is good. Um, so you don't need to tie it in or anything like that, it will just self cling to a wall and climb all the way up. Um, next, I have ivy. Now, you can get loads of different types of ivy, and people are always a bit wary because they think it's dull, but it's not, it's fabulous. And if, especially if you get a variegated one, because the variegated ones have big white splashy leaves and they're just so lovely and again they are amazing for wildlife. Nesting birds, they flower really late in the year so when all of your garden plants have gone over then ivy will come into flower so it's really brilliant late nectar. Uh, they're just a, a really perfect plant for, for wildlife. And then lastly is Actinidia, um, I never pronounce this right, Colomicta, and it's one of the first climbing plants I learned about that will grow on a north or east facing wall. And it's really exotic looking. It's a ornamental kiwi, and it has these leaves on it that I can only describe as it looks like somebody's gone over them with white and pink paint and kind of splashed all the leaves. It sounds crazy, it looks really fun and lovely. So that will grow in shade and brighten up your shade, undoubtedly. Any questions, do get in touch, and I shall try my best to make videos. Oh, here is here is the dog in question. This is Yoko, making all that fuss. Okay guys, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon, bye.